revival, revival. <laughs> As I going up to the up to my bedroom, revival, revival, revival. You know, and I, I I spoke on it a little bit on when we were doing ministry in Harlingen, and I was pregnant with King, and um, and we we've been doing ministry for for many 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 years, even though we were young. And then I, 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 we were just kind of getting dry. We were doing, so we were on, um, we had two networks and we were on 24-7. So we had to push out and crank out these, um, these videotapes. And sometimes they thought he was married to another woman because I'd make my hair red and sometimes blonde and sometimes black and sometimes blonde, red and black like a calico cat, you know? And so they kind of never knew if he was married to the same person. <laughs> Sometimes he would wake up and go, oh, oh, you know? But, and then I'd be big and pregnant, and we'd go into the uh, studio, and we'd crank out about 10 or 12 songs, and then months later I wouldn't be pregnant, and then I'd crank out another whatever, eight, 10 songs, and uh, so they didn't know how many children I had. Fun world. So anyway, um, so as we're doing ministry, we were doing four services on Sunday. Hector Jr. knows that. He was behind a camera and sometimes production. You okay? Huh? I heard a yelp. So he, we did four services on Sunday, 9 o'clock Spanish. 11 o'clock English, 5 o'clock or 5.30, one of those, uh, Spanish, and then 7 o'clock or 7.30 English. And then Monday we practiced in Spanish, and yes, I was on the Spanish worship team. You could not be on the Spanish worship team or the English worship team if you weren't on the Spanish worship team. Back in the day, um, you know, uh, when I got saved, my pastor in Brownsville said, you got to sing in the Spanish for you could, to sing in the English. And my sister and I, we could flip back and forth. We could lead and we can do um, harmony. And if she was leading, I could do harmony. And if I was leading, she could do harmony. But then when he said, you got to do Spanish, we were like, alabaré, 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 mi señor. So we learned it real quick because we wanted to sing on the English. Amen. And so I know all those little coritos in Spanish. I, I, I appreciate, um, oh, I don't know. Are we supposed to let the children, uh, children go or are they going to stay in here or whatever y'all want to do? I'm good with whatever. Okay, just stay on here. So I, I appreciate Analea. If you want to go, I mean, I have the pastor just walked out. If you want to go to Children's Church. Everybody, don't run so fast. So I appreciate, I appreciate Anna Leah because Anna Leah, I was going to call her today and say, hey, do you know he'll do it again? But I didn't because I, I'm always kind of doing this stuff to her. But it's an oldie but goodie, right? And um, I was going to sing it. I haven't sang it in who knows how many years, 25 plus. Uh, but uh, I decided not to sing it, so it's okay. Yeah, she was like, do you, do you know it? He'll do it again. Do you know it? <laughs> He'll do it again. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through, and, and, and so on and so on. <laughs> Woo! That's oldie but goodie. And so we're trying to bring these, some of these oldies but goodies. And I am so impressed with Ana Lea, but really it's the mom and the daddy that would just stick that tape in there and she would just listen to it and listen to it. And we got another one coming up, River. Boy, River, she gets fussy if you don't have the worship going. We were up here practicing. We stopped the music. She's like, eh, er, eh, 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 er, eh. and I'm like, okay. We turn it back on. She closes her eyes. <laughs> Come on, she's been worshiping God for nine months in that belly, listening to us, jumping up and down, jumping up and down. 
Amen. Well, Pastor, we're celebrating you tonight. And uh, he's such an awesome God. Um, I, I want to give my God the glory for him because, first of all, he, he brought him to me, and he's the love of my life. And second of all, I just wanted to celebrate him because what a great, faithful, integrity man that is your pastor. Amen. Father, we come before you. Lord, come and speak to us. We have rolled out the red carpet in our worship. Now we step aside. We get out of the way to hear your word. We come to see you and hear you. Lord, come down and speak to us. Amen, amen. So, um, I, yes, I went to um, Bible college in 19... Oh, did my mic cut out? I'm just kidding. I did that on purpose. I actually graduated from Rhema in 1985. And, uh, right? It's when the Senior was alive, Ken Hagen Senior. And uh, he used... We, we, we would go, the first year everybody does the same courses. The second year you kind of go in and do, you know, evangelists or children or youth or pastor or missionary. And uh, it was funny when y'all came to our, my office, you said something about Rama Bridal or Rama. what is it? <laughs> Rama Bible Training Center. So some people just go over there to get married. I wasn't one of them. My prayer was, God, I don't want to marry a preacher because I don't want to be poor. It's a true story. I don't want to marry a missionary because I don't want to be poor. I don't want to marry an evangelist because I don't want to be poor. It might have been a selfish one, but it was a true one. And when I married my husband, he was the producer of his father's um, TV show. I was the evangelist. He would, was real quiet. If you could believe pastor was quiet, he was real quiet. And I thought, Ooh, I got this maid in the shade. He's like my father. He doesn't speak very much. I can do all the talking. And then he developed before my eyes and I'm like, what happened? Like, where did you get that scripture? You know? And so it's been fun watching him develop. We went to um, Kansas, Topeka, Kansas, and put up a television station there. It was probably the worst time to put up a television station because some of the big name uh, guys had fallen and nobody wanted to be on TV. And uh, we were starting to starve because we couldn't even give the, 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 the stations the airtime away. And so it, it was a hard time. So we had to, we had to like really trust in God. And uh, one day I remember pastor saying, well, he wasn't a pastor at the time. Uh, God tricked me on that one. I'm just going to tell you. When we became pastors, um, I said, it, it was many, many years later that we became pastors together. And um, so, so what happened was I was like, you're a tricky God. I didn't want to marry a pastor. And he goes, you didn't. You married the producer. And I'm like, mm, tricky God. So he always gets his way. And I want you to know, even in this vision that God has given uh, Pastor Clark in 1999, I'm just so crazy that I was like, yo, let's do it. Anything that he's like, okay, let's go over here. Let's do it. You know, hey, let's go here. Let's do it. So I back him up in whatever, right? And um, hey, let's move to this city and put a television site. Let's do it. You know, but the, what has come out of that is that we have so many friends in different cities that if I go to a city and I don't tell them that I'm there, they get mad. How come you didn't come? How come you didn't stay with us? How come you didn't let us take you out to eat? And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. So if I take a picture, like if I'm in San Antonio or Dallas or Kansas or one of those places that we've put up television stations, even Puerto Rico, 
Puerto Rico, we stayed there 30 days. They took care of us. Here's a car. Here's a condo. Preach here. Stay in the beach for a little while. So we have family in all these awesome places. And um, God has been really amazing to us. You know, uh, I know that you don't ever, hardly ever get to hear me because I just let him preach. <laughs> oh, you let, you just hear me sing. And I keep my thoughts a lot to myself. Sometimes when you're quiet and you do, you can prophesy over somebody or whatever, and then you, when you're quiet in the room, sometimes it's larger than saying something. Do you agree with that? So I'm saying a lot of stuff. Not, not on my notes, but you're pulling it out of me, amen? So when you attend Bible school, you learn not only the Old Testament and the New Testament, but you learn the people that brought revival to America or revival to their city or revival to their nation. And we read many, many books, many books, many books. Sometimes I read so many books because you had to read them um, just to say, hey, I read it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't retain all of it. But the, you learn about John Wesley and D.L. Moody and Jonathan Edwards and Billy Graham and Amy Simple McPherson and Catherine Coleman, and you, 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 you don't try to imitate them, but just like the Old Testament, you don't want to do some of those things that they did because history has a, a way of repeating itself. So what was the key there on some of these revivalists? Well, I found that the key was prayer. And I love that we have started prayer uh, in the sanctuary on Wednesdays. And if you can be here at 6, and you don't have to wait for us to start the prayer. You can get on your knees over there or in the back. But I believe that God wants prayer in the altar, in this house, in the sanctuary. Amen. So there was a professor uh, from England in the 1940s that decided to take a field trip. You know how professors like to do that. And um, this, th this professor was named Professor Orr, O-R-R. -R. And he taught theology at the university there in England. And he told his students, we're going to go on an excursion and, and, and see some of the historical places in England, some religious sites that have been significant of building up the church of Christ's faith. And one of the places he took them to, um, to was a place where one of the revivalists, um, John Wesley, I believe it was like, I think it's like a little museum now, but it, it, it sounded like it's the, um, the parsonage where he lived. They have it open to the public, and I don't know if they still have it open to the public, but back in the 1940s they did. And so he wanted to show um, his students where he ate. This is his kitchen. So when they go there, they started, this is where he ate. And they were in awe. And then they go to another room, and this is where he studied. And they saw all the books and some of his writings, and things were left the way he left them in the study. And then they climbed up the stairs to his modest um, bedroom and they all gathered in there around the bed. And uh, one of the students says, what are these two patches? And the professor says, those are the, where he prayed in the morning, but not one or two minutes, hours, that revival would come to England and America. And uh, you could see where his indention of his knees were. And so they all go out to the bus to the next uh, place. When, he, when the professor goes to the bus, he's counting everybody. There's one missing. And uh, he goes. He's looking for that one. 
not in the kitchen. He's not in the study. And then when he went up to the bedroom, there was a student kneeling in the same place where Wesley um, would, would, would pray. And the professor walked in and, and saw him and said, heard him praying, Father, let it happen again. Let it happen again. Let it happen again. And let it happen through me. And as the professor went over there and touched his shoulder and said, we got to leave now. Uh, Billy Graham came up from the floor and uh, said, okay, professor. And guess what? It happened again. And so uh, with all sincerity and with all my heart, I know that God works through our prayers. Amen. Amen. And so that's kind of the thing that I wanted to share with you revival is coming revival is coming so in 1997 when i told you um we were just we would do four services a monday uh spanish choir and tuesday spanish church and wednesday english church and thursday english um practice and friday and Saturday, we would, um, we had over uh, 1,200 people in the English and probably about 800 in the Spanish. And so those were dedicated for uh, times that we would do quinceañeras and weddings. And of course, we had hospital visitations. And we were kind of in charge of all that. But after years and years of doing that, you just kind of get tired, you know? And uh, I, in 1997, I was, I can't say that I was big and pregnant because my third child, I wasn't big and pregnant, but on my first child, I like gained 52 pounds and I was big and pregnant. I felt like a hippo. But the second child, I was a little bit smarter in the way I ate and I only gained like 32 pounds. And my third child, I only gained 23, and they started getting mad at me, and they were like, hey, can you, like, eat shakes and pizzas at night? And I'm like, really? Woo! Wow, really? But um, I, I would get sick because Clark was getting the cravings, and he was eating strange stuff. It would make my stomach turn, and I would, I would get turned off by food. He was eating, like, pink ice cream with sour cream potato chips. And I would go, oh, oh. And, and anyway, any rate, uh, <laughs> getting back to, I was dry. And I was like, Lord, um, is this all you have for us? I need more of you. And we began to get hungry and hungry for the things of God. And then someone invited us to go to Louisiana to um, Pastor Carr's church and a revival was there and when we walked in we were late because our plane was late Clark saw angels um, on the wall and um, and we just knew we were in the right place and it just felt fresh and it felt like oh nobody knows us we can just lift our hands and worship our God you know and we began to worship God and um, Something amazing happened the next day when we walked in. They're like, oh, Pastor Clark and Pastor Lisa, I come to the front. We're waiting for you. And I'm like, we don't even know these people. We didn't even know the pastors. How do they even know our name? And so we got escorted to the front. And the, the revivalist in the city that came to that church laid hands on us. And nothing has been the same since. That was... <laughs> 27 years ago. And the reason why I know 27 years ago, because I had to ask my, my doctor, can I travel? I'm like six or seven months pregnant, and I just needed to know if it was okay to travel that far. And she said, you'll be fine. Um, so guess what happens? We have a baby river in our stomach, right? 
And the laughter hit us, and we, we, our lives changed like nothing was stale anymore. Uh, I have had 27 years of revival that God has been living in me, inside of me, outside of me. And um, it's an amazing walk to know that he, when you're in the secret place, guess what happens? He shows you and tells you secrets. When you're in the secret place, he lets you know what's, he can bend time and let you know about people. But not for a bad purpose, either to pray for them or to get them to another level. Amen? And so God has walked us, you know, um, he gives me the best things. He gives me the best church. He gives me the best friends. He gives me the best, <laughs> he gives me the best pastors. I love you, Nancy. <laughs> I love you both, Nancys. Yes. And how old are you? And she's my favorite, 34, Nancy. <laughs> I don't know about that 41 guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, so he gives me the best things. And I, I have shared this, this with a, a really good friend of mine that he gives me the best friends. And she just grabbed this and says, um, so I said, hey, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you still need to know that God will kiss you in the day. Amen? And sometimes I'll say, Father, I know you're there. I feel your presence. But can you just show me that you will kiss me today? And then I forget about it. I go up, drive through Starbucks, which is, I think, God loves my Starbucks. <laughs> and uh, uh, it happened all the time in Dallas. And then I came here and I go, hey, nobody ever pays for my coffee. They would go to, you would drive up and they'd go, hey, someone paid in front of you. And I'm like, yes, I should have ordered the sandwich and the. <laughs> but um, so I say that recently in town, you know, do people here, like, pay for your coffee, you know, like, when you go through Starbucks, totally forgot about it, and I get up there to getting pastor's coffee, and they're like, hey, we made a free macchiato, blah, 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 Did, would you like it? I'm like, heck yeah, yeah, and then the Lord shows me, I kissed you today, and so he can do that for you, you know, um, our production girl back there, you don't know her because she's kind of quiet, but she's family now, and uh, she had a little second job. Yeah, I'm talking about you, girl. And uh, she didn't want to work there anymore because why? They didn't celebrate her, you know? Aren't you glad that you can go to work and they celebrate you? Like, they're so happy that you're there. And so she says, I really don't want to work today. I don't even know if I want to work for this company anymore. And uh, when she goes into work, and it was just a say, a thought, or whatever, you know how we do, we just talking to God, and uh, the things, there's electrical fire in the back. <laughs> she goes, God heard my prayer. He did it. It's at the mall, too. It's like at the mall. Like, you didn't expect this, right? And that was... I wanted you to know that was God kissing you that day. Amen? And so God does these amazing things. If you look for him, you will find him. That's what the Bible says. If you look for him, you will find him. And this revival came to us, and we... Um, uh, we go to have King, and we didn't have a name for him. You know, your first baby, you always have the several names, and you're like almost picking them out of hat, you know, and, and you have the name, and, and we named Christian Danielle after my dad, uh, but we made it 
a little girly, Danielle. My, my father's name was Daniel, but we named her Danielle. And boy, was that a mistake, because she could yell. <laughs> so be careful what you call your children. But anyway, um, my daughter's lovely. We've traveled with her. She, she's like Ana Lea. She knows, because she's been by me, she's my side, she knows every song. If she's there, we'll go, hey, come on up. We're going to sing this song. And we, don't even, we haven't even practiced with her, but she's like a pro. But so here, we, we're going to have this child, and the, we're in revival, and the revivalist comes to our church, okay, three months later. And he's there, and I keep telling my doctor, I'm not going to have this baby until the end, at, until Saturday. And she says, well, I think I'm going to go on vacation. I said, well, you can go on vacation, but I'm not going to have this baby till Saturday. But, but you're going to be overdue. And so they're checking me every day because I'm overdue. And Monday, I was two sonometers. And Tuesday, I was three sonometers. And, and Thursday, I was four sonometers. And she's like, and she's checking me every day. And she's like, you should have this baby already. Like, nobody does this. I said, I'm not going to have this baby till Saturday. And, and, and Friday, I'm like five centimeters, and, 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 and it just keeps going. And so she's like, you should have this baby. I said, I'm going to have this baby on Saturday. And sure enough, and I was, <laughs> they, they, they wheeled in a, a, one of those roller desk chairs because I was like, okay, we're going to have this baby today, you know. And so... He, I said, I'm going to have this baby on Saturday. He's just going to lay hands on everybody, and I'm okay. I got what I needed from him uh, Sunday through s Friday. And so here we go. Nine o'clock, I start having contractions. And uh, we get up there, and the nurse says, oh, you're too small. You're not nine months pregnant. And I'm like, I'm nine months pregnant. I'm going to have this baby today in about two or three hours. And she says, Okay. So anyway, they admit me. We don't have a name for our son. He comes out. The doctor was not there. And that's another miracle where someone came in and, had, and helped me have my baby. And, um, and he laughs. Instead of crying, he laughs. And so Clark says, we have to call him Isaac. And I said, okay, but can we call him King Isaac? King of laughter. And so that's how we got King's name, King Isaac Ortiz. And if you do it in Spanish, it's Rey Isaac Ortiz. It would be R-I-O, Rio River. And so he was born in the river, and he's my forever reminder that God, he's just amazing. He, he, he gave us laughter, and even this child uh, growing up, and still to this day, if you talk to King, he just smiles and laughs. And now, how do you discipline that, you know? <laughs> but he's, he's, he, is a, he, he, he is a joy. He is a joy. And so uh, God is amazing. What I wanted to tell you is that I got a lot of notes, you know, and that's not too bad for one day of, uh, hey, will you preach for me today? <laughs> and I like it to be fresh, so I don't like to, like, pull out, uh, you know, hey, hang on, let me see. Do I have anything in revival? No. I like it to be fresh. And so we made ourselves available, amen, for those things of God. I want you to turn to... Isaiah 65, verse 1. Here's a God we see through the, through the, through, I mean, when we were studying uh, all the books of the Bible, and you have seen where God just wants to be with the people. And the people just keep rejecting him. And look what it says here. In, in Isaiah 65, um, what does it say? I've made myself available to those who haven't bothered to ask. 
Next. I'm here, ready to be found by those who haven't bothered to look. I kept saying, I'm here, I'm right here, to a nation that ignored me. I reached out day after day to a people who turned their backs on me, people who make wrong turns, who ins insist on doing their, thing, their things their own way. They get on my nerves are rude to my face. Day after day, make up their own kitchen, religion, and potluck religious stew. They spend the night in tombs to get uh, messages from the dead. Eat forbidden foods and drink a witch brew of potions and charms. They say, keep your distance. Don't touch me. I'm holier than thou. These people gag me. Can you imagine God saying that? <laughs> I can't stand there. Stench, look at this. Their sins are all written out. But there is hope, okay? I have the list before me. I'm not putting up with, any, with this any longer. I'll pay them the wages they have coming from their sins and from their sins of their parents lumped in a bonus. God says, so because their practice, their blasphemous worship, mocking me at their hillside shrines, I'll let loose the consequences and pay them in full for their actions. Stick with me, guys. God's messages. But just as one bad apple doesn't ruin the whole bushel, there are still plenty of good apples left. That's you guys. And so I'll preserve those in Israel who obey me, I won't destroy their whole nation. But even when we're reading, sometimes it sounded like us. We want to do our own thing. We want to go our own way. Amen. I have found that, you know, we're going through the books of the Bible with pastor in a year. You can turn, you can take off the scripture. And uh, real simple the sins of the people of the Old Testament that they rejected God and didn't believe he was the God and all, all the doing just, he want, all he wanted to do is just be revealed. And he wanted to reveal himself to, to humanity. I found the New Testament sin was they rejected Jesus. And didn't want to accept him as Jesus as Lord. And I found the day that we live in, they're rejecting the Holy Ghost. Come on. It, it, it's simple, but it's truth. John eleven fifty four says this in the King James. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near the wilderness, into a city called Ephraim, and there continue with his disciples. This scripture kind of bugged me. Why did Jesus therefore walk no more openly among the Jews? But went to the wilderness, you know, the Lord today, what does that mean? Why did he didn't want to be amongst them? And so as you read the scripture, it also talks about that he was on his way to resurrect um, Lazarus. But the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were out to get him because he resurrected Lazarus on the fourth day and they hated that. And a lot of people hate when you get ahead. A lot of people hate when you begin to do something for God. The devil hates when you do something. So these Sadducees and Pharisees tried to crush what God was doing. He just resurrected Lazarus and they couldn't stand it. And so when you have Pharisees and Sadducees around you and they say you can't do something and they're trying to crush what 
God's ministry is doing. Watch out. We have seen over and over, even in this ministry, when someone said, I think I should be the pastor. Well, why didn't you do it before we got here? You were here. I might be stepping on some toes right now, but that's okay. Because I've learned this from a friend of mine. God removes that doesn't removes things that doesn't belong. If you can't line up with the word and what's happening in this ministry, sorry. God's will will be done with or without you. And through the years, and just recently, someone came and said, Pastor, you need to step aside. I need to be the worship leader here. And I said, oh, okay. Well, let's try you out on 9 o'clock service. And I didn't know, but I kind of knew that he was planted here to cause strife and take people away. Well, when that didn't happen, he went to pastor and said, I need to be the pastor. And we knew, oh, come on. This is, this is crazy. So you think that nothing ever happens to us because we come up here and we give you the word and we get into the glory of God, but you have no idea the wrestle sometimes we have behind the scenes to put up with people. And I don't know whether to cry or laugh sometimes, and I think I've done both. I've cried sometimes, and then sometimes I'm like, what? <laughs> you know? What I'm trying to say, when God gives you a vision and revival is going to hit this place, he didn't bring us back here to let us fail. He didn't bring us back here for not to re for revival not to hit this place. And revival hit our church in the late 90s in Harlingen. All our people were never the same. We've been living in revival for 27 years. Now we've held this because we want y'all to catch it. Now is the time. Hey, how about that song? Um, now, now is the time to worship. Come, come, give our hearts to revival. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, that's another one. So we're going to bring all these new songs and all these revival songs, and we're going to instill in you what God has put in us. Can you believe that? God wants something to happen in your heart. But if you tonight, and I'm going to kind of close with this, you know, God, when you have revival in your heart, you listen to him. If you have $100... It, it, it's gotten to the point where sometimes I don't even like to carry cash because I just, I just give it out. <laughs> you know? I'm not, I, I'm just kidding. If I have cash, I'll give it out anyway. I, you know. But it's just being obedient. And the thing about we're going to layer prayer here, and the altar of prayer is going to be built up, and the people are going to come from the north, south, east, and the west. You know, it, 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 we planted somebody, and guess what? We got Larry, and he's a loaded gun. He's simple but powerful, and we are so glad to have him, and more of him are coming. More of him are coming, and the talent that you have in you is going to come out because we don't want you to leave left behind.
you have talents. Everybody has gifts and talents. And he says that everybody has a measure of faith. I appreciate you, Pastor Armando. I saw when I, when the Lord told me, hey, um, have him pray for the offering. Oh, man, his face just lit up and beamed. You can't take that away. That's like, that's like, to a Christian, I just got a diamond ring, you know? You can't take that joy away from me of putting him in motion. You can't do it. When you, when we begin, and you, you, and you, and you, and you, because we all do it. You got breath in your lungs, and you have a mouth? Don't let these two inches get you in trouble. Use them for the gospel. I appreciate you, Michael, coming and hearing God's voice to pray at the altar. More are coming. I believe all our leaders should be here laying their face on the steps. I see it. It's coming. Revival is coming. But as these people, the Sadducees and Pharisees and Sadducees, were coming to kill Jesus of because he raised Lazarus from the dead. If you have anything in your heart that you want to crush the ministry, or you don't think we should do that because you don't think it should be done, but it furthers the kingdom, I implore you to seek God. Because everything that we do, we go to further the kingdom. But it's it, anything in our lives, if we push or crush the spirit when he's saying, hey, pay for someone's coffee, or hey, give them $100, or hey, do this. Isn't it wonderful to be led by the Holy Ghost? Because you can't outgive God. If your hand is open to the Spirit of God and what he's doing, his hand will be open to you. I just know that over and over, uh, we, we, we could never outgive God. I remember, I'm going to tell you the short story, and I'm going to end with this. We had two stations left. Um, we had either Sodom or told them and uh, we were in we moved to Dallas and we had two of our stations um, appraised and there were over millions of dollars both of them and these weren't full power they were low power stations and uh, a Spanish um, pastor in Dallas wanted to buy both of them and so we went with the appraisal to show him this is how much they're worth and he's and, and he's put on. It was it was a simple um, little restaurant, and he put on a napkin. Okay, this is how much I want to pay for that, and I will. Will you pay it on payments? You know, us Hispanics, we like to pay those monthly things, right? And so he gave us a pretty good chunk, and then he was paying payments every month um, for a couple of years. Then. Clark says, okay, here's the next one. So he opens it up. He looks at the appraisal. And uh, he gives him a price. No, Clark calls me up. He's all excited. I said, hey, babe, how'd you do? Oh, well, so this station, da-da-da, we got this much. And he gave me a check, and then he's going to pay every month. And you're never going to believe this, babe. I was like, what? We... You're going to love it. I'm going to love it? What is it? Did you get more money for it? You're going to love this. We gave our biggest offering. I planted it to him. I said, you did what? You did what? And then I was like, the mission. You're right, babe. That's our biggest gift that we've ever given. 
And with that story, while God had supernaturally fed us, were times where sometimes we thought we were going to lose it all. And God would supernaturally, supernaturally feed us and take care of our household and all our kids. And I'm telling you what, this life has been amazing. And so as the days go by, I, I know that God's going to speak to you and do something for you. Look for him. Revival's coming. Be obedient. Talk to people. Do what he says to do. When we leave, live this revival life, amazing, amazing. Your life will never be the same. Such a time as this. Such a time as this. Look around the room right now. It's not gonna. Not, it's not gonna be like this very long. These seats are gonna be full. And we're going to love on the people that come in, you know. Even you, Joey. Next year at this time, you're not going to even be the same person. You're not going to even, we're not going to even recognize you. God is so good. Father, we come before you. We thank you. All we want is your presence. And if I can tell the secret of having your presence, the number one secret is staying holy. If you can stay holy and don't let those things easily beset you, revival will come to our city and our church. We thank you for this, Father. We've decided to set ourselves aside for the things that you want. We thank you for your presence. Nobody can take that away from us. Your presence, I've learned, is all I need. And so if you would stand up today, lift up your hands and let's worship our God. Father, I think that I thank you that the presence rests on each one of them. I thank you that you do something this week and that you kiss them and show them that you're there with them. As they walk this journey that we've walked for several decades, Father, show them that your grace and mercy will follow them all the days of their life. If they're facing hardship, if they're facing something they think they can't get through, let them know you're the way, you're the truth, and you're the life. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen.